Coming up on Push to Talk, our cross-platform dauntless impressions and obsession with the perfect in-home gaming setup. We touch on Sony's PS5, PS4 load time comparisons before diving into E3 2019 and CD Projekt Red's second annual hands-off Cyberpunk 2077 demo. We wrap things up by offering up our most hopeful predictions for the show at large, too. Thanks for listening and enjoy. This is Push to Talk, episode 25, recorded Saturday, May 25th, 2019. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash push to talk and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Then just download a title for free and start listening. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Jan, and alongside we, as always, are Joe and Bill. Guys, how's it going? It's a beautiful weekend. From what I hear, a very warm weekend for Bill, at least. Uh, it's raining here in Vancouver, but it's the weekend nonetheless, and that's never a bad thing. How's it going? It's going well. Um, it's raining here, too, or off and on it is raining here, and it is very hot. And uh, I don't know if that's a good thing, though. I, I might dispute you thing, saying that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, we did move the recording to Saturday on my request. I appreciate that, because tomorrow is supposed to be very hot here, and I decided that... Um, a rainy day would be better, even though people are now vacuuming outside or something. <laughs> vacuuming outside, that. like vacuuming their cars or the sidewalk? Like, what's going on here? The grass. Huh. I could see that happening. I know that uh, the whole time that I've known Jan, he's had some weird neighbors, so it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me at all if he told me someone was vacuuming the grass. No, it's... I'm um, sorry. I actually muted myself to close the window. I was hoping to leave the window open, but that literally lasted less than two minutes. <laughs> um, they're not vacuuming, and I'm not meaning that they're mowing the lawn either. I... Um, I don't know what it is. It sounds like a vacuum. <laughs> See, it's now the I noise think... you don't want in your podcast. Is, let's leave it at that. <laughs> so episode 25 is where we transition from a video game podcast into what is going on outside Jan's window. That's yes. what hey, I... We, I don't remember who I had this conversation with the other day, but it was about uh, robot lawnmowers. And I said, if I had a big enough lawn, I'd buy one of those. You would. And I would hope you would record it because it would be one of your experiments with technology that would go awfully wrong and I would enjoy it. God, that is so terrifying. With sharp blades, what could possibly go wrong in my life? You have a Roomba, don't you? Or did you not? I do. I do. Do you use it? Yes. Um, My it is a weekly Sunday morning routine where I wake up and don't even leave the bed and turn the thing on for about an hour while it slowly bangs around the upstairs uh, hallway, and it does a pretty good job of the areas where it actually can get to. Right. Yeah, I didn't pull the trigger on the Roomba. Uh, I'm glad I did because I now have four levels in my home and it wouldn't make much sense. So, And like one carpet. Yeah, stairs certainly throw everything out of whack. And and I will say, like I bought the low-end Roomba and it's a dumb robot, right? Like it bumps into things and then turns a random number of degrees to one side and keeps going until it hits the next thing. Um, I, I really want, like I feel like if anyone's going to invest in autonomous vacuum cleaners, get one that's smart where you can like, teach it a floor plan or something so it can actually know where it's been because this thing will bang around under the bed for half an hour and then be like i'm done no you're not. right <laughs> you know what it's kind of like ai from 2010 so video game ai pretty much so. yes yeah look we tied it back in it's relevant wow nice there job go. Chris. that was really impressive so well now that we're back on video games what have you guys been playing why don't we start with bill i know you've been playing something out of the ordinary for once yeah, I've been playing a lot, man, um, but I'm still not quite where I want to be. So I'm trying to get a little closer to Joe in terms of trying new games more frequently. I haven't really done that um, one game. So I played um, Destiny 2 because we always do. Let's move on from that. Um, played a little bit of The Long Dark because I always do. So let's move on from that. But what I did, which was significant, is I moved my PlayStation from my office downstairs, hooked it up on the big 70-inch 4K HDR, uh, and I started playing Red Dead 2 again. Um, and I play Overcook Overcooked, the first one, because it was free on the PlayStation Store. And I'm playing it with the wife, because she's a fan, and she always tried to play it solo. That didn't go well. So now we're playing together, and she yells at me and tells me what to do and when to chop things and if I get onions instead of tomatoes and how that goes horribly wrong. Yeah, but I was, I was going to inquire as to the, uh, the, the marital... Um, like what's the actual status of your relationship after playing Overcooked? Because it is sort of a stressful game if you play it with somebody else. Well, it's not bad because I, see, I don't have an ego about it. So I said, you're the boss. 
Um, you tell me what to do. So we'll go through a level and we'll figure out like, oh, okay, this isn't working. So, you know, we went through, we were making hamburgers once. Uh, so we went through and I, it didn't, we didn't do very well. And I said, here's all you need to do is tell me what kind of burger to make. There's three kinds. There's like just a regular burger, one with lettuce, one with tomato, and then one with everything. So just call it out and then I'll make the burger and I'll pass it over and you cook it. And yeah, so we've been doing very well with it. Um, but it, it's, we got to fail once and then kind of work out our mojo on each level. But, um, she's definitely the boss. She knows the game better than I do. Uh, she's played it a lot more. So I think, you know, you've just got to sign concede that you know you're not the the video game guru or whatever smart well, yeah so red dead's been good um because i played it for review you know that i played it for review i played it for guides for shack news and i didn't sleep for two weeks or whatever while i was trying to get through it and i found that when i played it i was pushing so fast to get through it that even when you started playing yon you were saying things like well i'm sure you know this side quest and i'd be like actually i don't right like i was missing things and i was missing experiences and little details in the story because i was trying to beat this gigantic game um which i did but now i'm playing it kind of at my own pace. Um, I had a buddy who beat it over the course of like four or five months and he loved it. And he took his time obviously because four or five months and I really want to do that. So I'm now feet up on the couch playing Red Dead on the 70 inch TV and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot just to sort of like go back through it and and not feel like I'm on a deadline. So did you, did you start from the beginning and start fresh or are you just revisiting your old character? No, I started from the beginning. Um, I'm somebody who likes to play through things multiple times and i you know we talked about we all, all all three of us talk about game of thrones and i enjoyed my second and third um runs through that show way more because i picked up on details that made more sense in season one now that i'd seen like season six for example and in red dead it's the same thing like i know how the story ends and i know how things go but i'm enjoying watching scenes that i know have an impact 40 hours down the line so i've i've, I've started fresh and i'm it's been pretty good yep how many times do you have to watch Game of Thrones season eight for it to become good? Um, zero. Yeah. You just don't pretend it's good. <laughs> sure. You just pre make up your own ending. Call it done. All right. Yeah. Might as well. What about Joe? What's Joe been playing? Jeez, nothing cool. Nothing cool. Hey, don't say that. You played something with us last night. <laughs> All right. I'll end there, but I'm still, okay. I'm still going through the messenger, which now I can't remember if we talked about last week at all. I don't think so. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay. So it's a, uh, I guess like a Ninja Gaiden like old school. Um, but the conceit of the game is that it kind of morphs over time into different visual styles and different genres. And I think that's why it got popular a couple months ago when it released. Um, outside of those characteristics, like I don't know that it's like the most fun game. It's almost like it's compensating for the seven out of 10-ness that it has by, by doing those <laughs> sort of like, you know, gimmicky things. So, you know, take, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because like, your mileage may vary if you find <laughs> if you find that like genre shifting extremely cool and i know that some have um then you know maybe maybe it'll work its magic more so on you um either way it's perfectly good so i've been playing that and i popped in city skylines on game pass because i was watching asif mm -hmm. and jack news uh play on his switch which ran surprisingly better than i had expected but um he gave me the itch for it and i popped it in and uh I couldn't figure out how to run water to all my residents, and that's, that's where I stopped. But maybe I'll oh, no. <laughs> maybe I'll revisit. It's such a good game. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, no, I'm no no condemnation here. I just couldn't figure it out and uh, got distracted. So I'll return. Okay, and I'll return to it and you know make sure that everyone has drinkable water. Well, as long as you didn't rage quit it over water. No, 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 no rage, okay. no rage. I will sick my minions on it. We'll have a guide for how to how to deal with water <laughs> by uh, Wednesday. <laughs> okay i don't know how timely a guide that would be for uh... not very it would be for just you but you know whatever it's fine <laughs> well you know what it might not you never know you never know city skylines is still a popular game still a popular game sure sure um at any rate uh seems cool and i i hope i can figure out the basics so that i can build hawkville or whatever i, I do I have a question for yeah you. please it's not off topic but it is it's maybe out of uh not expected so do you rate every game you play? Like, do you give it a score just personally? Oh, no, no, no. Because that's not fair, right? So, like, okay. I, we're having this conversation about City Skylines right now, and, and I'm, I'm saying I don't understand something, and it's not the game's fault. I just didn't, I didn't get there yet. What about every game that you beat, though? Oh, for sure. Oh, so you do score every game you beat. Okay. 
Um, I was I was curious about that. And what's what on your review scale? Like, what would a seven be? Is a seven good? Is it great? Is it probably not great? But seven's good. I think officially, it's seven is good. Which also might be the Shack News good, if I recall. I think it is. I think um, I'm trying to remember. I'd have to. I always have to reference it myself. I think uh, six is above average. Seven is good, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, and Shack News has never given a perfect score ever. Is that true ever? Yeah, it's never given a perfect score. I think if any game, I think there's maybe a couple games where we we could have um, uh, historically looking back, but we we've never given one. Um, and now it's not to say that we never would. Like I'm sure that the right game comes along, we would give it out. But uh, I th- we just take it a bit more seriously. I think like a nine is an amazing game, right? A nine is a fantastic game. So it's one of those things where maybe we just look at it in the sense that like no game is going to be perfect. But I still think that if the right game comes along, that we could give out a ten. It's I'd be just, I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Is this fictional? 10 out of 10 Perfect. check in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have my own personal. This is not like, I, like again, my own personal perfect game is The Witcher 3, but that's not a Shaq News point of view. That's separate, right? Shaq News didn't give it a 10. Um, so myself, it's The Witcher 3. That would be a, that would be a 10. For that's Shaq, it would be like... for all games. It would be like a new Quake that it would have to be like a surprise announcement that didn't have a lot of hype, came out of nowhere, blows everyone's socks off, gets everyone back into arena shooters in a big way, and is just like runs flaw- flawlessly and is cross platform, like does all those things right. That's the all, that's the quintessential perfect Shaq News game. I agree, and I actually think I like that you said that it would have to kind of come out of nowhere because I agree with that too. Um, I I think that you know Shaq News and myself and all the people there, we really do enjoy uh, games that sort of like catch you off guard. And I know like a recent example of that would be Tetris Ninety Nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but no, they've never given a ten. Um, we've never given a ten, but they, in the sense of that, I haven't been there for twenty years. Um, and I don't know. So I, I kind of like that too. I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't want to dig too deep into the psychology of it because um, I haven't really prepared. But you know, I kind of dig that we don't just throw perfect scores on popular games like a lot of sites might. Yeah, totally. As long um, as it's never like proposed and then shot down just because it's not allowed. Which and and I've been. I've been a member of the staff there and I could say it's, I've never witnessed anything like that, but that, that would be the only issue. If it was like, if it, if it was wrote that you cannot give a 10, that would be silly. No, that's not a thing. Yeah. Personally, I don't think I'd ever give anything a 10. I'm way too grumpy for that. I think I could find flaws in just about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe this is something that we should put on the schedule for like a deep topic. Cause it is a good one. Um, I don't think that a 10 is about a perfect game. I think that you look at it more about a perfect experience. You know, it's not about judging the wires that sort of make it run. It's about judging sort of like the way it makes you feel. And of course, you do have to judge its performance. I'm not saying you don't, but um, I think that the result sometimes can sort of cover up maybe a few of its flaws. Like we agree in The Witcher 3 that Roach is a terrible horse, right? I still think it's a perfect game, for me at least. Um, but that horse, man, that that's that's rough. Oh, yeah, gosh. there. yeah, there's there's a few. There's a few issues. In my my opinion, but um, the grumpy uh, gamer, <laughs> yeah, probably trademarked by somebody else already. Almost, but I yeah. So the, I guess the other game that we all played yesterday, we we sort of wanted to make a concerted effort. So the the backstory is that you know Bill and I usually play on PC, even though we do have a PlayStation Four and Xbox as well. Um, and Joe doesn't game on a PC, so we've been looking for a game that's cross platform that we can easily sort of hop into. Rocket League was the obvious one, which we'll probably do at some point because I know Joe, you're a big fan. Oh yeah, um, but we decided to give Dauntless a try, which has been an early access on PC for I want to say a couple of years, and I think it came out for the first time on the consoles this past week. So it seemed like a natural fit to give it a try. And probably the funniest thing about it is once we all got into Discord yesterday, and uh, Joe was already there, and his first thing was, "I don't think this is happening, guys. I'm four thousand in the uh, queue." <laughs> um, fortunately, I feel like. The queue is exaggerating a little bit because yeah. it took maybe two to three minutes to actually get in from position four to five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you? What do you? So we played for a couple hours. Yep. Um, what were your impressions, Joe? Impressions is that it is quite literally Monster Hunter World, and I, I can't can't stress enough. This is Joe Stasio impressions. As I'm not representing anybody. I played this game for two hours, and I was like, okay, I've done all this before. It feels the same. In some ways, it looks the same. There's a town. 
there's even some of the same quirks like we all we all remarked how y- your uh, your party doesn't necessarily uh, live in the same instance in the in the town or in the hub in the hub space you you mm-hmm. meet up out on a quest and like monster hunter world did the same thing so it's just it, kind of funny that it would it would be weird in the same ways that monster hunter world was so blah 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 it felt like it monster was- hunter world to me I don't love Monster Hunter World just because I don't love Monster Hunter. I don't uh, action grinding ach- action game isn't really of interest, so I'm hesitant to like put down Dauntless for that because I think obviously there's a market for it and it seemed perfectly competent to me. So really, I'm more interested in what you guys think because I know that well at the very least, Bill does like Monster Hunter, so I think he'd have a, an an important opinion on Dauntless. Yeah, I'm pretty. Uh... I'm pretty high on Monster Hunter World. And I never played another Monster Hunter before that, so that's worth noting too. Um, I, I felt the same. I, I want to be careful because when I played Monster Hunter World, you don't really know what that game is until you're at like hour 30, 40, 50 kind of thing. Uh, literally crafting options and things like that open up after you have finished the story. So I don't want to say that Dauntless is a shallow game because maybe for all I know, I'm just not putting enough time into it to get to its complexities. But I don't know. It just seemed like a watered down version in my first couple hours. Um, Aesthetically, I liked the way it looks, but the few fights that we had, it felt like they were all in the same place. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't, but I had a hard time really kind of looking and seeing different environments and, and, and really picking up on their uniqueness. Um, It didn't have that hunt aspect, right? Yeah. I would, I would say that's definitely a matter of, of the limited amount of time that we've put into it so far. If I recall correctly, Monster Hunter World, for the first few hours, you're in exactly the same location. Um, um, I, for like the first, maybe a little bit, yeah. Like three to four hours. But I don't mean, I don't mean like, oh, wow, it's one like location. I just mean like, I know that we were basically in like one forest, but it just still felt like over three or four fights, it almost felt like it took place in the same 10, you know, 10 yeah. squared feet kind of thing. Right. There was definitely um, a lot less of the, like Monster Hunter World has a lot of the track this animal and you get to experience different areas of the same region. And it was certainly a lot more varied and detailed, which I guess is probably a, a sign of the development team difference, right? You've got Monster Hunter World developed by a pretty big team and this is developed by a small group, uh, Phoenix Labs. So it's more an, an indie title, but... um but yeah, I would imagine that with more time, variety would increase. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but I still, I don't know. It just made me go, well, if I want to do this, I might as well play Monster Hunter World, you know? Yeah. Um, well, the, the big the big difference, of course, is um, Dauntless is free, free to play. And um, yeah. it, it did have some of the same quirks as Jill mentioned. Um, however, if I'm correct, Monster Hunter World doesn't really have a social space at all, aside from the... What did they call it? That ship? Was it the ship at the very uh, top? There oh, is yeah. a social space, but you have to go to like the top of the ship and then you can sometimes yeah. see your buddies or something. But it's, it's yeah. for all purposes, it's not. A it was space. a very small place, whereas at least in uh, in Dauntless, the main hub, the city, town, whatever you want to call it, um, was fairly sprawling. It's where all the NPCs were and you were there with other people. Um, and it seemed like after you got together with your party to do a hunt... When you return to the social space, you were all in the same instance after that. So it's just, it suffers from the same weird design choices when it comes to grouping up together, which I just, I found it strange in Monster Hunter World. I find it strange in this game. I feel like um, joining a social space as a group should no longer be a problem. Um, Destiny's been doing it for years. Other games have been doing it for many years. Like this, it's not a technical challenge. So it's must it must be some sort of design choice, which I just don't understand. No, I don't either. And I've spoken previously, maybe not on the podcast, but just in general, that like I you know, I stay up past when a lot of my friends go to bed and I play games and so I have to play alone. And there are times when I just don't want to be isolated when I'm playing. And the one thing that Destiny gives me is no matter where I go, there's people. Yeah. Whether it's patrols or the tower or matchmaking for an activity, there's people there. Um, and you feel that connection to people. You may not be talking to them, but they're there. Monster Hunter World definitely has a bit of that, but only when you're on an actual hunt, of course. Um, And Dauntless, I think, did a better job of the social space, probably just connecting people than Monster Hunter World did. But um, aesthetically, I prefer the Monster Hunter World social space, though. Totally. Yeah. So the question is, are we going to go back? Well, I will be back, if only as a means to spend time with you guys. (laughs) <laughs> but as a game, well, yeah, it didn't interest me so much. See, I'm more to say that was fun. 
let's play rocket league okay <laughs> now we're talking because <laughs> i i like rocket league and i just feel like with dauntless it was like we shouldn't be playing a game only to hang out together unless there's no other options but there is there's a there's an option that we we don't have to debate about we all love it we all love rocket league so it just makes sense to me that we we can look for other games in the future where we can kind of connect as a group and play but we have one in rocket league where everybody's already on board so so rocket league of course has cross play between the consoles and the pc and Bill, you and I, we played it on PC in the past, but I'm just thinking, you brought up your PlayStation 4 earlier, and we talked pre-show about how you moved it back to your living room, and it's sort of a much nicer console gaming experience as opposed to sitting at your desk. Like, if you're going to be sitting at your desk, you might as well use your PC. And I'm sort of in the same, of the same vein. I think I agree with that. Um, what I'm curious about, though, is I, I guess we probably cannot transfer our PC progress to, say, the PS4 version of Rocket League, which I feel like I picked up at some point. It was free or part of PSN Plus or something. Um, yeah, it I launched know free that. on PS Plus, yeah. Um, like, but I, ha I, I wouldn't want to have to start over. So I'm looking it up now, and what we're talking about specifically is Psyonix launched their Rocket ID platform a couple months ago. And so what we're asking is, can you merge Rocket IDs? Be just because by having an instance of the game, you are given one by default, right? Yeah, so there's there's two sort of ways that publishers or games have done this in the past. They've offered you the ability to transfer it, which basically take a copy of one platform, copy it to the other platform, and then progress from there. And there's still two separate entities, though. Ideally, I would like to just have one, and I could play on PC or PlayStation 4. Right, right. I'm, I'm with you, too. And, and I can research this because I would like to merge my... Switch and Xbox accounts into this one. This is where idea. we need to we need to uh, phone a friend. Um, we need to call Asif because I feel like this is exactly what he was talking about the other day, uh, like a week or two ago. Um, where I don't know if they've really stated whether or not this is going to be a thing. Um, and the big move from Steam to Epic was, you know, people are concerned about whether or not all the things that they purchased and they bought on Steam whether those are going to transfer over, kind of thing. I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't like. I don't understand the topic well enough to speak with authority. So this is where we definitely need to either research it or, like I said, we gotta we gotta phone a friend. Yeah, I'm going to lean educated guess. Lean towards they don't support it due to DLC issues, like like actual transactions you may have made on one plat platform versus the other. Like if you buy a car through Xbox, which I have, Nintendo Switch doesn't want to give me that car for free. Yeah, this is where it all kind of ends up falling apart, right? Um, right. And this is the same concern that people have with um, Epic buying Psyonix and, and potentially moving it or almost definitely moving it to the Epic Game Store on PC and people wondering what's going to happen to my stuff that I bought on Steam and, and all that. Um, yeah. It sounds like the Rocket League ID is really just a way to identify you um, as a player regardless of platform so that you can add friends from other ecosystems. Yeah, that's all. that's all it appears to be. And then really, that would just allow us on PC to join you on Xbox in the same party. Yep, um, yep. And I have done that. And it great. Works fine. I'm, yep. I'm happy that we can do that. Mm -hmm. I just, I wish it would go further than that. Agreed. But at the same time, and while I agree that like serious players have some real concerns here, I'm a pretty casual Rocket League player, so I don't really care either. Personally, like I'll be able to just jump in on any platform and whether I have my stuff or I don't have my stuff, whatever. That's true. Care. I'm just I just want to like, jump around with Joe. Most of the stuff that we've unlocked is cosmetic stuff anyway, right? I think that's all it is. I don't think there's more than that. Yeah. Like that's yeah. all that exists. Well, I mean vehicles and like packs that you yeah, buy, but, they, but it's still cosmetic. Yeah, they're all really yeah. They're all the same. It's just a cosmetic thing. They so. get there's I like to fly uh, the Shack News flag when I'm when I'm playing. That's yeah, always cool. I might Maybe I should break out my Steam, um, what's it called? Steam Link? Um, it's that little box you hook up to your uh, TV and it basically streams your Steam content from your PC to that box and then to the TV somewhere else in the house. If there's any so. latency on that, that sounds <laughs> rough. <laughs> there couldn't possibly be latency, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah, there could. And It'd be have, terrible. I used it to play have. Civ Five before and it was latency. And that um, oh. that's Civ Five. Yeah, you're boned. I think I'll be playing Rocket League from uh, my PC, honestly. I was just looking forward to the, um, you know, sitting my butt on a nice comfy leather recliner to play some Rocket League as opposed to sitting in this very comfortable office chair. But, but then we have the problem, and this was kind of a problem last night, um, being able to communicate with each other, right? Because if one of us is on PlayStation and one of us is on Xbox and one of us is using your Steam link or something, I don't know that the, we can... 
the only reason that is a problem is because Joe doesn't have a $300 headset. <laughs> I'm going to work that's, on that. That's the only problem. But <laughs> no, you're right. Because, um, I mean, we've, we use Discord for everything now, right? Like, it seems to be, certainly on PC, it's the way to go. And for the most part, Bill, you and I, I don't know about you now that you've moved your PlayStation, but I have things set up so that I can still use Discord via a laptop even if I'm playing on the PlayStation 4 and use the same headset because I think I, I used the SteelSeries Arctis Game DAC Pro. Um, Arctis Pro plus Game DAC. Sure. Whatever whatever order you put those words into, it's a good headset, but it basically allows me to have two input sources, right? Like my PlayStation and Discord, which is good. What Now, if you'll recall, what was the problem with me using that headset? Which I agree is the best headset <laughs> I've ever used, but what was the problem? The problem is that you've got too big a head, man. Oh, yes. And when I say that, people are like, oh, he has a big head. No, you don't get it. Like, maybe the biggest head of anyone that's not like seven feet tall. <laughs> Joe, have you met Bill in person? I've never met. No, I've never met Bill in person. Okay. Never well, prepare seen yourself for that moment. <laughs> it's gigantic. Because um, you don't, it, he says it, but it's not really until you meet him. It's, um. what's that comic book character, the guy that turns into like a stone missile or something? I don't know. I don't That's know. Bill. That's it's Bill. all head and shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it it really is. Like I'm built like obviously. I mean, maybe not obviously, but as you might expect, like my father and um yeah, I'm a solid human being from the shoulders up. Hmm. Do like, you have you hit me with a truck and you hurt your truck? <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> but it's, I don't know, man. I don't know. But the uh the uh the the picture is painted. I I'm 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 picking up what you're putting down. So it actually, the funny part about it is though, is that when I was wearing the headset, which again, I'd like to point out, I absolutely loved it. And I wish I was using it right now for everything I ever do. It was making me bald mm. because it was so tight on my head that it was wearing the hair off of the top of my head. I see. Yeah. And unfortunately they use a, this isn't supposed to be a mini review, but unfortunately they use a, um, like a, a ski goggle type strap over the top, which is actually quite comfortable when your head is, you know, it fits it properly. But you have very little room to grow past what that strap is designed for. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, but anyways, if you have a normal size head, that's a that's a fantastic headset. Well, it sounds great, but this new homeowner is not in a position at the moment. Oh no 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 no! Like I said, we're gonna work on this. Don't nice. worry about that. Nice, thanks. Make it happen. And then we'll probably end up playing some Rocket League in the next couple of weeks or so after you just mentioned new homeowner. So you'll be busy with uh, moving and boxes and stuff over the next week, I think. But we should still be back. For sure. our regular scheduled programming for episode 26. I think okay, so. That's what you said. And I want to plant the seed now that I want to take you guys two on one. Perhaps you throw in, you throw in a friend, three on one. Let's make it happen. Oh, we can bring Dusty along. Let's do See, it. now I have objections. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. Dusty Dusty is going to drag the team down, man. So now so it's, it's really just a one on one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, what I'm about if we put Dusty, Dusty on Joe's team? Make it a two oh, on two on paper, but really now it's a five on zero. Oh. <laughs> nah, Dusty's Dusty's. He's actually pretty good. I, I had the pleasure of of connecting last night with Dusty. Super nice young man. Rocket League One is just the... an amazingly fun game in that sense. Whether you're very skilled at it, like if if you play with somebody that's very skilled, you can admire what they do. And somebody that isn't, it's funny to watch them figure it out. It's just an entertaining, fun game all the way around. I think. Yes. One of the maybe the only game that I've ever watched Jan put, I would say, 20 to 30 hours into, where he never once was angry. You just, he couldn't be. Even when we lost, we're like, meh, whatever. But there well, was no it's anger. All, it's all my fault. It's never really been the game's fault. Yeah. But this game just brought a joy out of you that is is rare with games. You know, usually they, uh, they cross you in some way, shape, or form. But you, uh, I remember the first time we played, we, neither one of us was in a really good mood, and then we played it, and by the end of it, we were both just laughing our ass off. So it was, you yeah. know, it's perfect that way. It is indeed. All right, let's talk about a couple of news stories that happened in the past week or so. Um, we talked about the PlayStation 5 a few episodes back, I think, mm -hmm. um, which was sort of announced, but with very few details a while ago. And this past week, um, a video leak that sh actually showed the improved PlayStation 5 load times. Now, this was talked about before during the initial announcement. People have said that they used uh, Spider-Man to demonstrate how much faster the PlayStation 5 is when it comes to load times. Um, and this was due to the, you know, 
specially designed SSD that they have in the PlayStation 5. We talked about how SSDs are sort of a given and who knows what kind of magic sauce Sony put into that SSD to make it so much better. But uh, did you guys watch this leaked video where they could actually see um, some of the demonstrable faster load times on the new PlayStation 5? I did. What did you think? I, I feel like it's like a highly curated thing we were watching. So like, it's hard to be impressed by it because it's like, it could have <laughs> it could have easily been manipulated in any way. But sure, I mean, taking at face value, it's it's cool to see something that they're talking about being backwards compatible, which is for me just like a huge pro you know, bullet in the pro column. Um, it's nice to know that my existing library will receive benefit from this new hardware, which, you know, makes me feel like my investment over the past couple of years has been worth it. Plus you'll be able to if you buy a PlayStation 5 whenever it comes out, you'll be able to swap it in place of an existing console. You know, you can go and exactly. uh, retire the PlayStation 4, sell it, give it to a, a nephew or something like that. You know, someone that will put it to good use. And you, you're not just stacking up consoles in your living room. No, we want to avoid that for sure. But you're right. As far as it being curated, I mean, obviously, this was like an actual demo. So it was a demonstration of, look how much faster we've made this. So clearly they picked something where they got the most you know, bang <laughs> exactly. for, the, for the buck there. And um, I, I haven't personally played Spider-Man yet. It's on my list of things to do. Uh, but load times on consoles can be pretty poor. There are many games where, that suffer from, from terrible load times. So doing something as seemingly simple as speeding that up can actually really improve the the experience. It's one of the things I always tell people when they're looking at upgrading their PC. It's like, do you have an SSD yet? And if you don't, that should be your first upgrade. So it makes sense. Sure. I don't know. I'm a grumpy PC gamer. So <laughs> I see the benefit in having a faster console, of course. Like the PS5 should be significantly faster. Load time should be better. Otherwise, what, you know, what are we doing here? But it always bothers me when we get into this um, marketing... Uh, cycle of new consoles where we talk about their power. Can we just stop saying power? Because they're not. They're not. They're not powerful. What, what would you prefer? Look how much faster it is than this. But like, okay. and I'm not saying they didn't do this in the demo. They obviously did show how much faster it was in the PS4, and that's great. But I really dislike the idea that we're developing powerful hardware. We're not compared to a PC. It's like saying, like, look it, we made a car that goes 80 miles per hour. Our last car only went 50. And PCs over here going, okay, great, you know? Um, so I would rather just, like, if we want to talk about how much better it is than the PS4, that's one thing. But they always get back into, like, like Sony always markets it like the power of the PS4 Pro. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's not powerful. It's not at all. It's powerful yeah. compared to something else that you built 10 years ago. But it's not powerful compared to basically any average gaming PC in the world. But I think... I think in Sony's defense, I think when they say it's more powerful, they typically mean to refer to either their previous offerings or their direct competitors, which would be like the Xbox One. And that it's kind of like Ford comparing the power of their latest truck, which is, of course, noticeably slower than like any kind of racing car produced by Ferrari. But, you know, they really mean it's more powerful like than Dodge's latest truck offering and stuff like that. So I don't really mind that too much. I know what they're getting at. Um, and I almost wish that I'd rather they use the term power as opposed to them throwing these technical terms at stuff like gigaflops and all that stuff, which is just like Giga. millions of those. And it's like, uh, okay, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, so I'm actually kind of happy that they've taken something fairly tangible where they said, look, it takes 12 seconds to load on the PS4 Pro. It takes three seconds to load on the PlayStation 5. Like, that's a verifiable, uh, quantifiable change that makes this new console better than the old one. And to me, that's worth more than them supporting 8K, for example. Right. As right. opposed to 4K. Like, honestly, I could care less. Like, 8K is not going to do anything for anybody. But if that means that they can now do 4K at 60 FPS instead of 30 FPS, that's a benefit. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, uh, you know, r respectful of, of Bill's opinion because... Uh, you know, in terms of absolutes, he's correct. There's no, yeah. there's no direct competition with anything you can get on your on the PC side. But um, I do think the the auto example is is apt. Like, uh, yeah, if you're if you're in the market for a Kia, you're looking at other Hyundai's to you know as a reference point. You're not looking at mm. Alfa Romero or whatever. I think they sometimes forget to really. I think sometimes when they're doing this, though, they have a habit of pretending like the race car doesn't exist. 
You know what I mean? Well, they almost have to, because Not otherwise really. they have to put an asterisk next to everything. It's like, it's the fastest non-PC gaming system ever designed. Like, it, it's terrible marketing. <laughs> I think I think they take I think they take some liberties sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. Just in the way they word it, which is, you know what, like, they know what they're doing. They're, um, they're professionals at marketing this stuff. They're professionals at building this stuff. It just, it just does kind of annoy me a little bit. Um, you know, I remember there was some backlash when the dude who made, uh, I forget, it was a co-op game, PS4 only. He was the guy that was at the video game awards that made an ass of himself. Oh yeah. The brothers guy. Was it brothers? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. a way out. A way out. A way out. Right. So someone asked him what it was like developing on the ps4 and they kind of asked him in terms of like from the perspective of the power and he went it's like a five-year-old pc and that was my favorite quote ever about playstation 4 and you know i don't know i'm just yeah it bugs me i don't know maybe i'm just uh dumb for that but (laughs) it's i I hate this conversation where we use the word power in a console it's just bothers me and I, i do understand your perspective as well what i would say is that the other side or people who are console first gamers probably say like okay we get it your pcs are faster enough already you know it's not really and i'm not looking for an acknowledgement that pcs are faster because it's not a competition it's a totally different thing that's i just think that sometimes when they're having these conversations they just use very strategic wording you know what i mean um like bragging about having an ssd in something you can have an ssd in a playstation 4 you know like bragging about having 8k no you don't no you don't well that one i agree with yeah you know what I mean? That That's sort of like the overall opinion that I have is that when they're marketing this stuff, it's very strategic in what they're saying. And um, they're counting on you not knowing what you're talking about or what they're talking about um, to market this to you. Because there's people out there now that are like, well, if I get a PlayStation 5, I'm going to need an 8K TV. It's like, mm, no, probably not. <laughs> yeah, you can probably say that about most marketing. So that that's probably fairly, fairly generic. But but you're right. Um, so we'll say I just hate all marketing. There we go. Yeah, speaking of marketing, this this one you won't hate because um, E3 is coming up, and E3 at you know these days is basically all about marketing. And um, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, the next big game from CD Projekt Red, the makers of Witcher three, which is your favorite game of all time, if I'm not mistaken, um, said that they will be at E3, they will be on the show floor this year, but the game won't be playable. So last year they showed Cyberpunk to a very small select group of uh, media. And, um, you know, they I think they only got to watch some footage. There was no actual gameplay. And, of course, everybody got to watch the, the footage afterwards as well. But this year, they'll be on the show floor, so I think people will be able to, at least with their own eyes, see something, but still not be able to go hands-on. Yeah, I don't read too much into that, personally. I mean, it seems like, like a that. natural progression, right? You go from behind-closed-doors demos to public demos to eventually, you know, public and private hands-on actual gameplay yeah and there's the thing is like people say like people are looking at them saying like it won't be hands-on as oh it must not be ready it must not be close that's possible but there's also a thousand reasons that it might not be hands-on that could have nothing to do with its timeline of you know when it releases could be anything it could be that the build that they are able to get finished in time for e3 has bugs in it and they don't want to present that to people in a playable fashion like we have no idea we have no idea why it's not playable right i mean unless i'm misreading the story no you're right and um there, there's certainly the opposite scenario quite frequently where the game is playable at E3 or some other conference, um, and that means nothing about how soon it's going to be ready. Um, the game that comes to mind, and I, I think I'm trying to remember correctly, but I feel like Skull and Bones from Ubisoft was playable at last year's E3. I know it was behind closed doors because I went and played it, and they just delayed it until at least spring of next year. So just because it was playable a year ago, it doesn't really mean that's going to come out. So I guess you can say the reverse of that is also true. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just, I think that the the take that a lot of people have from the fact that it's not playable at E3 is to say that that means it's not close. And I don't, that's, maybe it means it's not close, but I don't necessarily think that that's a guarantee. That's all. Could be a lot of reasons personally. Sure. That I think. This seems like the kind of game where I really want them to take their time with it too. Well, and they they will. Like you're talking about the people that made The Witcher Three. So, uh, love it or hate it, you can't deny that it's still like what. Even in 2018, it was one of the top selling PC games on Steam, right? Like it every year. Like it's been out for four years now, and it's still one of the top selling PC games. So it's uh, yeah, it's a good game. I hope so. Kind of like there's a small part of me that's um, you know we've seen a lot of sort of um, highly touted developers lately making some missteps. So. 
Yeah, but I think there's a handful of developers that that don't make those missteps. Um, I think Rockstar's in that list, um, at least recently. I'm not talking about the entire history of these studios, but Rockstar, like they don't release a game every two years. They release one every six years or so. Um, and they get it right. Like you can't really, you've played Grand Theft Auto V and you've played Red Dead. And I think you would agree they're pretty solid experiences, you know? Um, yeah. Their open worlds are very involved and there's a lot of detail that gets missed in, by studios that release open world games every two years. I um, just and, wish they would do more with those games in between. And they do offer lots of free content. It's just not the kind of content that I want. No, they're pushing the online and I get that. The Witcher didn't do that though. There was probably like 20 DLCs that were free. Um, like card sets and armor sets and things like that that you like free contracts and missions like they were paid DLC but there was also a lot of free stuff mm -hmm. but um, CD Projekt Red comes across to me as a studio that's going to get it right and Cyberpunk will probably be in the same quality level as The Witcher 3 and it'll probably be relevant for four or five years after it's released and you know I think that's what they do are you excited about this Joe Cyberpunk I think so I'm scared of everything they make because it's just so daunting. How, how so? Explain that. <laughs> it's no, no. It's just it's daunting. Um, yeah. It's the scope is scary. Is all I mean. And um, uh, it took me a long time to get through The Witcher Three. And despite liking The Witcher Three, it didn't leave me with the ten out of ten feelings that Bill had. Not because it didn't pull off what it was trying to do, but it was just too. It was too much for me. And uh, that's what I'm worried about from Cyberpunk for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a big commitment kind of game. Yeah. Like to the nth degree, like to to the nth degree of what's even possible. <laughs> I still haven't finished all the DLC for The Witcher Three. I finished the main story, and I finished one of the how many main DLC packs were there, Bill? Two or three? I finished the There's first two. one, yeah. the Heart and Stone, yeah. or something like that one. Yeah, and Blood and Wine is arguably the best content the game has too, which is yeah. the second DLC. I need to go back to that. I've, I'm like halfway through that. That's really good. Um, yeah, I understand what Joe's saying too. Like. Uh, I think like as Joe gets to know me more, you start to realize that like with my like for listeners, like I've got back problems that prevent me from, you know, being a pro soccer star kind of thing. Um, I have a lot of time to game. So if I wanted to sit down after we're done recording this podcast at four o'clock and play a game until 4 a.m., I can. Like I just have a lot of free time when I'm not working or whatever. So a game like that fits my style. Like I really like diving into those games that are 100 or 150 hours. But um, I that's very rare, right? Most people just don't have that. They don't have that luxury. True. So, you know, they need those five hour, 10 hour experiences that they can sort of just like finish it, bite sized, move on. So I, I, I see that. I'm just excited to hear more about the game because there's a part of me that's worried that the genre or the, the setting isn't going to be something that I enjoy. And so I, I need to see more. I, I love the fantasy setting of The Witcher. Um, I'm less enthused about the futuristic cyberpunk type setting. It's just like a personal thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I could go either way myself. But um, more, I more so have like just faith that it'll be achieved, you know, as silly as that might sound. It's just like, whatever it is, you pick your setting. I just like, they've earned my trust, I guess. So it's like, if they want to do some sort of like deep plot in downtown Detroit in 1970, I'll be like, what? Weird. But I'm sure it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> like, so. Uh, they, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at too. Yeah. Circling back to what, what Jan was saying. Um, there's certain devs that just they've gotten it right consistently enough over the last few years that you can sort of go, this is probably going to be pretty good and I can, you know, pre-order it. Whereas there's certain devs where you're like, mm, maybe I should wait. Yeah. And you know what it is too with CD Projekt Red is that you don't have this feeling of The Witcher 3 being an anomaly where it's like, I can't understand how they pulled this off. Although I think it did start that way. But as you dig in, I, and like I think like no clip did documentaries and there's been plenty of coverage about how the game was made and it became clear that the witcher 3 was the product of tons and tons of passion and time and care and crazy talent right but it wasn't it wasn't this like triple a game that was born of crunch and like tons of cash the way like skull and bones might wind up being um so that's why i feel like i have more faith because it wasn't like somehow they pulled this off in like 18 months and they got it to get like no it's like they're going to take their time and that's why there's not a whole lot of fear that they'll screw it up because they're just going to take their time until they get it right i agree and i think it goes back to um it's sort of it's the difference between having going to like i don't know like in canada we have this place called the brick where you can buy furniture you know it's it's like you can go to the brick and buy some 
generic piece of furniture for your house or you can go to the dude down the street who's going to handcraft it you know in his garage over the course of you know six weeks with passion and you know what i mean like that's sort of the way i look at a lot of developers is that you definitely have developers that are um they're kind of following a blueprint and a formula where they just keep cranking out these games over and over again and there's realistically not that much different between them but then you have some developers and there's not a lot of them and they are worrying about every inch of that open world you know what i mean like every tree every bush every stone and everything has a place and a purpose and has thought in it and it's not just filler and the witcher 3 gave me that vibe um and i think pretty good chance cyberpunk will do that too yep you know what else does well that? at this point sorry go ahead uh, and i'll let you segue on but you know what else <laughs> what what other game does that breath of the wild Jan, you're on the clock go ahead i i have started it um i started it a week ago when it was a nice day and I went to try out the whole uh, Breath of the Wild in the hammock concept that I've got going here. Mm-hmm. And it worked pretty well until I realized that um, any kind of daylight makes the switch become a mirror. So um, yeah. I, I bought like a little uh, anti-glare screen protector thing and that helps a little bit. Um, but I, I've, I've played for about an hour. Uh, my, my big time will be in towards the end of June when I have some time off from work and I plan to really dive into it. But so far, so good. Perfect. Usually we talk about something called New Game Plus, where we sort of talk about what's been announced or what's coming up that has us excited. This time we're going to flip it around and we are going to make some predictions as to what is going to be interesting or exciting in the future. And Bill, this was your idea, so I feel like I'm obligated to toss it your way to start. What's your what's a prediction that you think would be interesting? Well, earlier this week, um, The Sims 4 went free on Origin. And I wrote a news post about it, just kind of on a whim. And the news post was doing very, very well. Apparently, it's a popular game, and people really wanted to play it for free. And I started thinking about it, and think I went and checked the release date, the original release date for The Sims 4, and it was, I believe, 2014. So it's pretty much it's about five years old now. I think we're getting The Sims 5 this year. Um, and I've heard a lot of people with the opposite opinion. They're saying, like, oh, I'm not seeing developers talking about this new project on Twitter or anything like that. And, you know, realistically, we're probably not getting it until 2021 or whatever. I don't know. I feel like the reason that they made it free is to hook people, right? You want to get people in on The Sims and get it fresh in their mind. And you do that a week or two out from E3. Um, and I know EA doesn't have their, uh, they're, they're not going to be officially at E3, but they are going to be um, holding their own event at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, EA Play. So I think I think we're going to see The Sims 4 announced. Five. Uh, yes, five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We'll blame that on the head cold. I don't know if it'll be this year. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking it could come out in the fall, but it also could come out like maybe in February or March or something. So, But I, I feel like it, it at, after E3 is over and EA Play is over, I bet you we'll know more about The Sims 5. That's my prediction. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, I spent a fair amount of time in The Sims series as a whole and sims 4 as well um be curious to see what they would do in in a new sims game aside from you know the usual graphical upgrades and stuff uh, i always have that question about civilization as well yeah but they've poured and they've poured so much content into the sims 4 like i don't there was an article not too long ago about how much money you'd have to spend to buy all the dlc for the sims 4 and it's staggering yeah, I would. I, I'm just ballparking it, but I would put it between four and five hundred dollars, probably, if not more. Yeah, I think it might so. have even been in the in the thousands or something like that. What? But it's uh, the point. Point is, they've basically been building on that platform for so long with new, you know, new things to do, and so I'd be curious. Like The Sims Five, they couldn't kind of just reset with a, you know, now oh, you have ten percent. Yes, what? they. Yes, they can, and yes, they very well could, because I believe they did that with The Sims Four. Like when The Sims Four came out, you didn't, you couldn't have pets, right? Not so to start with, no. Yeah, that was right, right. Thing. But I, I think you could in The Sims Three, right? By the end of it, I think they had that in there. So I feel like maybe that is a possibility. Like they could rip everything out of it, and we've seen the NHL franchise do that before, did we not? Well, yeah, that one's been had stuff ripped out of it and slapped back on the side with duct tape for a number of years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like when it came over to the PS4, we had like a quarter of the features that were on the PS3 by the end of it. And then they just slowly started adding in features again and marketing it as like, well, look, now we have this feature. Yeah. We had that five years ago. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know, man. I, I it's interesting to see how they're going to handle it. I don't want to condemn somebody before we know more, but I wouldn't be shocked to see that the base game is a shell of what the Sims four is now. 
Yeah, no, I, I don't think you're wrong. It'd be interesting to see what happens at E3 or EA, EA Play. So, uh, Sims 5, that's your prediction. My prediction, and this is going to be a pretty short one, and it's um, it's a little sadistic, and it's because it's fresh on my mind, and that is um, I will still be looking for a DisplayPort extension cable that works with my new Oculus Rift S by the time I can pre-order the Valve Index in Canada. <laughs> um and, and I don't know when that will be, and I have a feeling that at some point I will buy the Valve Index for its superior graphics. But I got my Oculus Rift S this week, and I haven't used it very much yet. I've, I've hooked it up, and it you know the display is um, is really nice, and it's definitely an improvement over the previous one. And I, I like how comfortable it sits on my head. I had this pipe dream that I could maybe run some extension cables and turn the adjacent guest room into a VR play space, because it's mostly empty. And I would have like a nice six by six, you know, like a six square foot area where I could play in VR. Um, but to do that, I would need at least at least 10 to 15 extra feet of cabling. And unfortunately, DisplayPort extensions are notoriously difficult uh, to get. And I think part of that actually literally has to do with how much bandwidth those cables have and how much they already put through and the longer the distance, it, it degrades very quickly and it's just not very feasible. So I haven't given up yet. I tried a 15-foot cable last night. It did not work well. Um, I have two 10-foot cables on order, one coming from the States that uh, people on Reddit have said does work. Uh, I have no idea if that's actually going to get me all the way to the other room or if I'm just going to be you know, wearing a headset in the hallway like an idiot. But um, I feel like my, my plan to do this that was originally sort of like a cherry on top has now somehow in my brain become an absolute necessity that I have to get this figured out. And that's some sort of character flaw like i'm broken in that way that i I latch onto this and i can't let it go so i've been thinking nothing but display port cables for the past i don't know 16 hours or so it's terrible this is why your struggle with technology and the way that you interact with it within your personal life is as entertaining to me as any video game so the the other two alternatives i have are one can i just punch a hole in the wall um spoiler alert no i can't um Mm -hmm. it's not my house two could I just buy another 2080 Ti for another PC and put it in the other room? See now that doesn't that. seem smart. I could, but it doesn't seem smart. Okay, so here's here we get, let me unpack this for a second. First of all, I thought immediately when you're telling this story, I thought he's going to build another PC. That was what I thought. He's got to have it now. He's got to have his VR PC. But the second thing is, um, we've had you know offline discussions about my Windows and whatnot. If you buy a second 2080 Ti and you don't just gift it to me out of love, <laughs> I'm that's it. We're done. No, that's you're not, not. You're not getting. It's a not happening. Um, I, I will say that Reddit has had some sobering suggestions. One of them being actually like, why don't you just move the PC into the other room and get extensions for your mouse, keyboard, and monitor into the game room because those extensions are actually a lot easier to come by. And that is not. That is not an incorrect thing to say, and they are correct about that, but that still seems like way more of a pain in the ass than I'm willing to go for. Like, I want this, but I don't want it with that much hassle. No, that, I don't like that suggestion. I, I don't think this is a to be continued story, but my prediction is that I will not find a satisfactory DisplayPort extension by the time I get my Valve Index. And at that point, it's going to become a whole new problem because the Valve Index has, um, external sensors so it needs even more cables to be extended uh, this this will never end until i have i guess a dedicated vr pc yeah wow i have a laptop that's technically vr capable but it's it's kind of hard to go from a 2080 ti to like a 1050 qtx or whatever is in that I, I don't know if i could do that i might as well have just bought an oculus quest at that point anyway that's my prediction joe what about yours my prediction first of all i'm uh, i i'm with bill uh, this is like this could be like a really epic saga, uh, and I'll say that as someone who's trying to like figure out his living space, I'm having similar internal battles about like which room gets the Xbox. I've never had those to are very worry important about that. decisions to make, especially when you first move in. Yeah, and I've never had to think about anything like that. I've, uh, now I have more rooms at my disposal than I've ever had in my life, so it's 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 new. That means two Xboxes. I don't like that idea. I I did think of this then this is insane and won't I won't do it. But I, I had the idea to make like a server style station in my basement and route everything through like uh f- you know, through HDMI splitters so that I could run HDMI cable to any room and I could therefore play 
any console in any room, which would, of course, necessitate having USB plugs to plug a controller in every room. It got messy real fast, but the idea did cross my mind. Yeah. Now that, I'm telling you, Jan perked up when he heard that. He's like, oh. The, but the only, okay, so the only issue, though, is HDMI is easier to go over long distances than DisplayPort. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like another potential option is to buy a $200 DisplayPort signal booster. But this is all starting to get very expensive very quickly. Yeah. So, but I, no, I, I meant totally. For Joe. No, I know. I believe me. If I was moving into a brand new house, I don't think I could move in immediately. I would have to take off all the walls and run cabling for about a month. Mm -hmm. Yep. Before I could uh, actually as, let other people get in. As somebody who bought a house in August, and you you know this because I was talking to you as I went through this. Um, I ran Ethernet, so my modem right now is in my basement where uh, the cable actually comes into the house. And I have run Ethernet to every room in my house. Yeah. So now I have like ports where I just plug in, you know, Ethernet. And uh, that has been amazing. I will I will say that. It has been amazing. I don't have the same problems Joe has, but now I'm equally interested in how he solves his issues. <laughs> I, I don't want to get like, trust me, I will not be doing what I just said. So I don't want to <laughs> like anyone too excited. No, That's, but even at a no, small but, scale, you get to that point pretty quickly where you're like, you know, I would, I have more space now, so I should really organize things more like the, whatever the media station goes over there and, you know, the gaming stuff goes over here, but you needed to talk to each other. And wireless is not an ideal solution for a lot of these problems. So inevitably it comes down to how long of a cable can I get and how do I best hide it? Because I can't just have it running across the floor. Well, through the walls, which you do not have to knock out, you can fish it and it works well. Um, and you said wireless just now, did you not? Can I, can I run with that for a second? Sure. Do you remember, and this is slightly off topic, but funny. Do you remember when Dusty had problems with his internet connection forever playing games, getting yes. booted out of stupid situations? And I meet like after maybe six months of this, I said, Dusty, are you wireless? And you're like, no. And he's <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. End of discussion. <laughs> It's, it's, it's your problem. Though. So yeah, we had a buddy who was trying to play games online wireless for like six weeks or six months and it was a nightmare. So wireless, you're right, is never the option. But, uh, Joe, I, I, I think you probably need to at least fish ethernet through your entire house. Oh, trust me. That's happening for sure. Yeah. It has to happen. Yes. Wireless is terrible in houses, man. Uh, Too many floors and levels yeah, and yeah, yeah, space. Yeah. And I'm a, uh, I, I'm a boutique console gamer, so I don't use Wi-Fi. I do console. Sure. Not a PC guy. But it's all wired. It's all hardwired. It's all formatted very nicely. Everything's dusted, clean. It's good. It's good. My downfall was that I don't have enough Ethernet ports in every room. So I only have, I think, one of them. Um, maybe two. But that's fine. Think, you just get a switch. Yeah, I get a switch. To that and you're okay. No, but I don't, I don't get a switch. You know me. I don't do that. Oh, too messy. So my PlayStation 4 is wireless in my living room, but I don't play any games online. I just use it mm -hmm. for updates, right? So it's not a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, right. Like when I'm playing Red Dead, I'm not playing Red Dead online yet. I'm not playing NHL. I was going to say, I'm yes, just... you just said we should play that, and you can't be doing that wirelessly. No, but I can just grab the Ethernet cable out of the back of the Apple TV for two hours and plug it into the place. That sounds like so. a terrible inconvenience, man. <laughs> no, it's it's actually very accessible because I already have to do that with the HDMI cable for the PlayStation. Because I don't. If I, I have to I've get run... up out of the recliner to unplug a cable and plug it in, then something didn't get wired properly, Bill. Ugh. No, and here's the thing. I don't have enough HDMI ports either, and I'm not getting a switch. So I already borrow the HDMI cable from the back of the Apple TV and put it in the PlayStation. Well, so when I want it, I, I flip it back and forth, but it's very easy. Like it's not, I don't have to crawl or anything. It's just like, you know me, I just don't want to buy more devices. So, so pedestrian. Oh, just find your cable and <laughs> shut it. Joe, we got a little sidetracked. Did you actually have a prediction? I do. I mean, it's, the, I don't know how bold it is. I, I do think, there's going to be a partnership, Nintendo and Microsoft, beyond just uh -huh. having like Cuphead on the Switch. I, it's been, you know, this isn't me like being clever or anything. It's been talked about plenty, but um, I, I feel pretty confident that we'll see something, you know, maybe maybe in the way of like an uh, Xbox app for um, for for networking purposes, or you know, the on the on the more outlandish end of the scale is of course like the Xbox Game Pass being on the Switch. I think there's a lot more tech implications with that idea. Um, but anything's possible. And I think something will be announced at E3 and launch in 2019, whatever that thing is. Do you think it would include Nintendo games coming to Xbox? No, 
No. Okay. That Only, is one road too far, isn't it? I think it's because they've made a statement on it, and I'm not saying they can't revert the statement, but I think it wouldn't be a quick change if they did revert. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Does it, yeah they've, I mean, they've more or less said, like, we, we make hardware for our software, period. Um, and that was, like, right before they uh, launched stuff for um, smartphones. And then mm-hmm. they, they, you know, quickly pivoted. And, and I think the official response was something like, yeah, but we're specifically making smartphone, smartphone software for smartphones. We're not porting Mario 3D World to smartphones. Yeah. So who, who do you think this would benefit more, Microsoft or Nintendo? Because I kind of feel like Xbox One is the one that's more in need of a partner than Nintendo. Yeah. So I, the, the partnership thing implies a 50-50 benefit, but I agree that it's not. Um, if anything, Nintendo could use help on the networking side. You know, they have like the Nintendo Switch Online smartphone app, so that you can talk to people while you're playing Splatoon or whatever. That's silly. Is that how you have to do it? That sounds terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> it's kind of like how I played Dauntless last night with Discord, actually. Yeah. Well, which, but I mean, that was a sort of hobbled together solution, but not the official like recommended right. way to do this. I guess exactly, but. exactly. Uh. It, so the and and there's even like like you said the official way to do it is to like route the switch audio back into some third party uh audio adapter so that you can hear the game audio and the voice chat at the same it's a total mess it, it's bill's mm-hmm. nightmare it's bill's nightmare it's a yeah. gross like cthulhu of cables that you need to just to play splatoon which i guess is appropriate considering the setting um yeah i won't do that no and even i won't do that so Nintendo stands to gain some benefit if there is some sort of networking, uh, you know, like if it, just to like to simplify the concept, right? Like if it's a Discord esque solution, but it's the Xbox uh, software, right, built into yeah. the Switch, that would be yeah, and way you better. would think like Microsoft's got lots of experience with Xbox Live, and it is actually, in my opinion, always been the superior sort of social mechanism as a, compared to like PlayStation's offering. Um, like Xbox group chats and voice chats have always been quite good. And yeah. I feel like the Switch would have plenty power to pull that off on its hardware. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the kind of, this this kind of idea requires like an OS update, right? Like something to be a little more integrated. So I think that that makes this whole prediction like less likely than I would like. But, um, you know, the, the rumors have been circulating for months now that there's something brewing and if something is brewing, I think Xbox Live service helping out Nintendo Switch is certainly a possibility. Cool. I think that would be good. That would be an exciting. I hope that prediction comes true, Joe. Thank you. Same. So having said that, do you guys have any other parting words? We're at about 70 minutes. Every week, Bill says, well, we should really make this a bit shorter. But um, we, keep, yeah. we keep talking. <laughs> yeah. I think it was good. The predictions were a wonderful idea. I'm curious to see how they'll turn out. The good thing is that E3 is only a couple of weeks away, so we should have some answers fairly soon here. No parting words here, but I I hope you guys have a great holiday weekend. If you have a holiday weekend, and if not, have a great weekend. We had our holiday weekend in Canada last week, so... Got it. To uh, Well, actually, everybody else, hopefully you will have had a nice holiday weekend, because as you know, this episode will air on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, as it does every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You can find us at pushtotalk.fm or at pushtotalk.fm on Twitter. And of course, all the other usual media channels, podcast platforms. Anywhere you search for Push to Talk, you may or may not find us. You should. And if you don't, uh, send us a message, info at pushtotalk.fm and let us know where you want to get to us. Until next week, thank you for listening.